Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are taking a look at the Guerlain Legendary Reds collection and I just wanted to show you how everything came packaged. I ordered directly from the Guerlain website and you've got this beautiful fringed ribbon here and a gift box. And Guerlain has just started a rewards program on their website. So I'm not exactly sure of all of the details, but you get rewards points for each of your orders on there. And then I think you can trade them out for samples and maybe there are like other like free gifts or something, but it's very new. So I don't know a lot of details. Just yet. to show you everything inside, this is the uh, packing slip in here. And then you have this beautiful Guerlain tissue paper. I mean, I love the, got the Guerlain logos and the B on here, it's a sticker. And then this is my order. Now, let me start off by saying I love old movies, old Hollywood glam and so forth. And that's what these lipsticks remind me of. So we're going to talk a little bit about the details of the lipsticks, but I did pick up all three of the cases as well. So there are three cases released and they are all velvet. So this one here is the Majestic Ruby. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the cases, they do have a double-sided mirror here. And to get this to stay closed, what you do is you take your lipstick and let's see here, perfect, exactly the one I want in there. And you just slip this over. So this little thing here actually keeps it closed and your name of your lipstick or rather your number is engraved down here at the bottom. So you can easily mix and match these. So this one here is Majestic Ruby. And I forgot to mention these do come in a velvet case. Honestly, I don't use these cases, especially with a velvet case. It's really hard to get the velvet out of here. So this one here is a luxurious garnet and you can see that they do come sealed with a piece of plastic to keep this closed in the box. So this one is luxurious garnet. And the last one is Royal Burgundy. And you can see they all say Guerlain on there. So just so you can see all three shades together, we have Ruby, Garnet, and Burgundy. So I ordered five of the six lipsticks. I actually do want to have all six of the lipsticks, but the one shade is, I haven't seen it come available or it's sold out right away. So when that comes in, I do plan on picking that up. That's the 1870 in the satin finish. So we're gonna go over some lip swatches now while I give you a little bit of information on these lipsticks. So uh, Guerlain sells the Rouge G lipsticks and the cases separately so you can mix and match. And they do have some gorgeous new cases that came out with these new velvet lipsticks in the fall with like tartan prints and plaid and so forth. So they're really gorgeous. They would also go very nicely with these cases or with these lipstick shades. So definitely something to look into. Now I do have a video on the Guerlain velvet lipsticks when they first came out. And I have to say that the more I've been using these, the more I like them. And they're just really a, a nice formula. So these, this collection for legendary reds, what they did was they took three iconic reds of yesteryear, now reinterpreted in two emblematic finishes, the velvet and the satin. And that's a quote from the Guerlain website. Now, some more information from their website here. We have the first shade, 1830 Rouge du Tigre, which is a flaming brick red. And this is the one that I'm wearing, you know, in the video as well. This is the very first red shade created by Guerlain for the Lip and Cheek Color Bloom of Rose. And again, this was back in 1830. They've been creating these for, you know, 200 years. So, the shade is inspired by Asian lacquer art and the brown red tones that adorn the most precious objects. So definitely very, very gorgeous. The shade 1870 Rouge Imperial is a deep berry red 
And this shade was used for Guerlain's first lip color in stick, Ne Moublier Pas. And it, according to Guerlain, it's deep, slightly bluish tone, once much cherished by 19th century aristocracy, stands in homage to Empress Eugenie and is inspired by the fabrics worn by the royal figures of years past. So again, a really beautiful shade. This is the one that I only have in the velvet formula right now, but I do want to pick this up in the satin. I am really loving all of these shades that they have come out with. The third shade is 1925 Raw or Roi de Rouge or King of Reds. So it's a pure and intense red. According to Guerlain, this shade revisits the color that Guerlain created for the Roaring Twenties in celebration of the frank feminine beauty that characterized the era. Almost a century later, this red remains the most vibrant of the whole collection. And again, I think these are all beautiful. I love both the velvet and the satin formulas in these. And let's go ahead and take a look at some arm swatches and comparisons. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the formula. The formula for the Guerlain Rouge G Velvets is a very nice formula. It feels a bit drier than some of the velvet formulas that have come out recently. And when I say drier, it's not necessarily drying on the lips. Although I do have to say, I have quite a few of the velvet lipsticks and a couple of the shades have, you know, they have felt a little bit drier than others. None of these that I purchased here in this Legendary Reds collection have had any, uh, you know, I have not experienced any dryness from any of these. But when I say that it's a drier velvet, what I mean is that most of these velvets that are, are coming out now, um, they have more slip, more of a creamy feeling to them. They don't necessarily dry down. Previous mattes and velvets, they kind of dry down to that powdery finish and that's what you would feel on your lips. And for me, those could feel a little bit drying. This is sort of a little bit in between. There's a little bit of that vinyl texture in the lipstick formula, which gives it some slip and flexibility on your lips. I think it helps prevent any like cracking and gathering in the lines as well, so that it looks really plush on your lips. And I think that's gorgeous. But it dries down to a finish where you don't really feel it. You don't feel something very powdery, but you also don't really feel slip from the lipstick product either. It just sort of dries onto your lips, but still with flexibility, if that makes sense. So uh, this is a lipstick after nine hours. I've had uh, plenty of eating and drinking during this time. Uh, you can see that it still looks really good. It is no longer like coming off. See here, here's a tissue maybe a little bit. So there's a little bit that came off, but for the most part, there's not that much transfer at this point. And I think it's held up really well. So I'm going to bring you in closer so you can take a closer look. So here it is. So I just wanted to share with you how long lasting these lipsticks are, how well they stay put. They are not a mask proof, transfer proof lipstick. However, the amount of transfer, it, it does wear off, but you know, the stain that remains really looks good afterwards. It doesn't end up looking patchy or anything and it stays pretty consistently colored throughout. So just wanted to share an update. So for these lipsticks, we're gonna start off with the arm swatches and then we've got some comparisons here. And I have to say that, all of these shades, I am really, really loving. So I picked up the three new cases, but obviously I have five lipsticks, so I am going to have to put some in some other cases. I already had some extras from previous shades that I had picked up, but you know, I would definitely, I personally like to keep mine all with a case, but if you don't want to, they do come with this black um, little cap, and it's a thick walled cap, but it actually does go down snugly. So you don't have to worry about your lipsticks drying out or this cap falling off if you didn't want to buy a case right away or you're waiting for the perfect one or you know you just wanna trade around case cases. So this does work perfectly fine.
All right, so we're gonna start off with shade 1830. I'm gonna put that right here. This is the velvet finish. Just build up that so you can see how deep the color can get. And this one is described as a flaming brick red. And I like to think of it, this is one I have on my lips right now. It reminds me of old Hollywood movies, you know, where they, sometimes you would see that more of that like orangey red. And I think this is perfect. To me, this is what I wanted the um, Lisa Eldridge Cinnabar lipstick to look like. And we are gonna compare those. And I've actually paired that with the Cinnabar lip liner from Lisa Eldridge. And I think they go very nicely together. This is the satin version. And you can see that, yes, it's the same shade, but because of the finish, you're gonna notice more nuances of color, which is why, personally, I think it's totally fine to get both the velvet and the satin finish in the same shade, because they do look very different on the lips. You can definitely tell more of this orange here. And with my coloring, I typically don't wear a lot of orange-based lipsticks. They don't usually look that great on me. They have to have just the right balance and the right tones, which is hard to find. But I feel like these, they're like classic and they really do work for me and I'm so excited. So I'm really happy with them. And then we have 1870, which is Rouge Imperial. And this is the Berry Red. Again, I only have this in the velvet finish, but I do want to pick up the satin when it's available. And this is it, you know, I don't think it's super berry. I do think though that it is red with a touch of berry in it, but to me, it's really more of a neutral red leaning cool. You can see a little bit of berry tones in it when you build it up, but when you just use one layer, it's just a slightly cool red. It's not as cool as a traditional berry red in my opinion. And then last up, we have 1925 raw, I have a hard time saying this, raw, raw de rouges and, or de rouge. And this, I believe that means king of reds. And this is going to be the intense red, a pure and intense red. So that's a satin finish. You can see that this one is closer to a tomato red. Um, very beautiful shade. Let me put the, well, we'll just go ahead and put the velvet down here then. And it's got more of, you know, I just, I think it's really more of a neutral red. You can see this one definitely has more bluish berry undertones in comparison, but this one's neutral, leans a little bit warmer, but it's really pretty classic. And I think all of these shades are just absolutely stunning. So I'm very, very happy about these. Let's start off by comparing the Guerlain Velvets that I already have. So aside from the velvets, I have some satin rouge G's that I'd like to compare as well. Let's actually start off with this one, which is one of the holiday shades. And I can't, I can't actually see the thing, but this is, you can see it's got this beautiful marbling. This one is the red and uh, they put the number up here at the top. That's why I couldn't find it. This is number 34. So we're gonna put this, let's put this right here so you can kind of see how that compares. You can see that it's more blue based than the 1925. And this is definitely a satin finish. We have another one of those as well. This one is number 35. This one is a little bit orangier. And there you go. So you can see this one also has the gold marbling in it, which you can see a little bit of that gold hue in there, but that's how similar they are. So they definitely have some similarity. This one's just a little bit softer and more nude than the uh, 1830, which has a little bit more terracotta in it. And this one here is the classic red from Guerlain. This is shade 214. And this is one that if you buy any of their special cases, this is the red that you always get with it. So this is their iconic red. I have to say, I personally 
prefer the 1925. It's going to be a little bit cooler than the 214. And I, yeah, but comparatively, you can see how they go together. This one here is one of the new Velvas. This is 880. And we're going to put that one right down here. And you can see this one is more, more of a blue based red. You can see the difference between the berry shade versus the red shade here. So this one again is 1870 versus 1925. And yeah, I really like this one, but it's definitely going to be different because of those bluer tones. We also have shade 888, which is, let's put this one up here and see how this one compares. This one's more berry-ish. Let me put it down here so you can kind of see that, but it's more purpley. So there's definitely more of a purpley berry tone compared to the 1870, which again is going to be more red than berry in my opinion. And just one more to throw in, although this one's not really going to go. This is 910. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is the shade, um, I forget what they call it, like black red or something like that. But you can see that it's a really deep, more like purpley black shade there. And definitely more purple than red. Just a couple of Chanel's from the La Comet collection. So this formula is the Rouge Allure Velvet. And this shade here is 148 Rouge Cosmique. But I wanted to mention this formula in particular because it is definitely, as I was mentioning how this is more of a drier velvet formula, the Chanel La Comet, they maintain a little bit more slip on your lips at all times. And they're also a bit more radiant. They don't dry down to you like a true velvet finish to me. So this is the Chanel Rouge Cosmique, and it's really more of a cross between these. It's going to be closer to 1870, but not quite there. We also have 138 Rouge V Radiant. And by the way, these ones here from Chanel have a little bit of shimmer. And, you know, the closest is going to have to be the 1870, but it it's really, it just doesn't quite match up with that. The 1870 has more red in it. This actually looks berry in comparison to it, but on its own, it really, it doesn't. So uh, yeah, I think this looks a lot cooler next to the Guerlain shades, but in real life, let me put this on my hand for you so you can see it's um, really a bit more more neutral than cool. This is a Chanel Rouge Allure Velvet Extreme in 136 P1 Noir. And let's see, where can I put this? We'll try to put this right here. And again, doesn't quite go. 1870 is gonna be the closest with this one again, but again, this is more red. I wanted to take a look at the Chanel number no. five reds that recently came out because again, these, well, you know, they're reds that just came out. So you can see this is gonna be closer to our Chanel shade compared to the Guerlain's. This is going to be Emblematique number 147. And you can see it's just gonna be cooler in tone. Now, 176 Independent. Okay, so that's here. And I think that is gonna be closer. So this is the Guerlain 1925. And you can see 1925 is still just slightly, it's a little bit brighter. And, you know, it, it's a little bit more neutral. I wouldn't necessarily say it, it's got a little bit more warmth to it to make it neutral, but it's not like warm. So I feel like they're relatively close, but not quite there. We have 99 Pirate, and you can see that it's going to be cooler. This is the Guerlain here, by the way, 99 Pirate. And 157 Legendaire. It's definitely more berry 
than any of the Guerlain shades. Or purple. Just want to compare a couple of the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvets. This one here is 36 Lantardi. I'm just going to squeeze that right here. You can see that Lantardi is also, you know, it's considered a tomato red. And it's going to be close, but it's actually got a little bit more blue in it than 1925 does. But I'd say that they're pretty close. Now, the formula of the Givenchy Deep Velvets, they're a creamy velvet. They do give you a velvety look on your lips. You have a little bit of that vinyl texture, but they remain creamy throughout uh, wear time. So this one here is 37 Rouge Grenet. Let's put that right here. Hmm, maybe that's actually better down here. Let's put that right next to 1870. And you can see that it's not going to quite go with any of these. It's a little bit more of a burgundy red. And, you know, it just doesn't quite go. Let's take a look at some Lisa Eldridge lipsticks. So this one here is Jazz. I'm just going to put this here because I'm running out of space. But you can see that this one is going to be more purple berry-ish compared to any of the Guerlain's. All right, let's take a look at... Lisa Eldridge Velvet Cinnabar. I'm gonna squeeze that right here in between the velvet and the satin formula. And you can see that this is definitely gonna be deeper and more brown. It's a gorgeous color, looks great on a lot of people, but um, you know, I prefer the Guerlain. We also have Velvet Dragon, which I'm gonna put right here as well. This is gonna be more orange. And you can see that it is more orange than either the satin or the velvet version. It's, again, a beautiful color. Not quite right for me, but, you know, I think it's, I think both Cinnabar and Dragon, mix them together, they're a good mix to kind of get these colors. But you can see the difference between the velvet and the satin formula and the depth of shade as well. I also wanted to show you Velvet Morning which is gonna be more of a bright orangey red. And it's not gonna quite go with any of these, but if it's something that you have, you can see the difference in tones, how they compare. And the last one I want to look at is the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Ribbon, which again is gonna be a blue-based red. And again, here we have the 1870, the 1925. You can see it's not gonna go with any of those. So just one more time so you can really see the Guerlain. This here is 1825 Velvet, 1825 Satin, 1870 Velvet, 1925 Satin, 1925 Velvet. So overall, I have to say I am incredibly enthusiastic over this collection. I think the three new cases, which I was kind of like, uh, do I really want a plain velvet case? But I really do like them. Um, I don't think necessarily that the, the cases are a must have per se. You know, if it's not something you're drawn to, you know, pick one that you like. They have so many different cases that are gorgeous. And if I had to pick between these and the ones that came out recently in the fall with the different, you know, fabric cases, I personally love the textiles and prints and everything that they used on these cases. So they're kind of, you know, some of my favorites. So I would pick those. But these lipsticks that came in this Legendary Reds collection, I think they got the nuances and the tones just so perfect. You know, to me, they all remind me of glamorous makeup, Hollywood glam, you know, olden days is correct. I definitely can see that. But the thing is, those are all like classic shades. It's not something that's from the past and doesn't look great. And I think the formula is just, is very comfortable. And I really, I just think they look so sophisticated. Now compared to other velvet formulas, I have to say that, you know, I, I love the Givenchy, the Rouge Deep Velvets. Those are some of my favorites. Well, they are my favorite. Uh, I love the creaminess of them. I love the way they look on the lips. 
they do look different than this. If you're looking for something that truly looks like velvet on the lips, I think this and the Givenchy are both kind of there, but this gives you more of that dried down. It's super like sophisticated, more in old style, if that makes sense, like old Hollywood style. And I just think it's absolutely stunning. So I love that. I love the Rouge G Satin Formula. It's one of my favorites as well. Absolutely love it. So very happy with all of those. I do want to get that sixth shade. So if I get that, let me know if you want to see that one as well. But I think these are all amazing. And I think the way these look on the lips, definitely one of my favorite velvet finishes because of that, you know, um, really, really a great collection. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful and I hope I've been able to answer all of your questions about comparisons and so forth. So if you have more, please let me know. And again, compared to the Chanel velvet, so if we're looking at the Rouge Allure velvets like the La Comet or the Le Lyon collection, the Le Lyon that I have are a little bit drier than the La Comet, which have a little bit more slip. They're, I wouldn't say they're creamy on the lips, but they're a little bit more slippery on the lips. I don't think that they give the same, they're a very nice look on the lips, but they never give you that like drier velvet finish that you get from the Guerlain. Whereas the Rouge Allure Velvet Extremes, those give you more of that velvet look, but I think these are a little bit more comfortable to wear on a daily basis than those, which can be slightly drying. Um, so just something to note there. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.